Hello everybody, welcome back to The Real BBC. Today we'll be re continuing our read-through of the Hebrew Bible. It's, uh, it's Good Friday today. So I'm asking any of those, uh, again, hypocritical Christians out there, again, I have no religious affiliation, this is a history book, clearly, but people just don't read because they can't. And so, I'm just asking any of those Christians that just treat another person with decency and respect. Please enforce the law. My life is getting still absolutely fucking terrible because of ongoing criminal activity. There is nothing I can do. There is nowhere I can go. There is no one I can call. I am working constantly around the clock. My parents' family will never respect me as a fucking professional. And the, the, the toxicity of that fucking relationship has destroyed every waking moment of my entire life. I didn't, I didn't need to be 23 to solve all this science. That was just the first time I could get kind of away from that fucking toxicity. This community has destroyed the progress of science by 20 years. And they refuse to do anything besides get offended by truth that I post on the internet. It is fucking disgusting. I don't give a fuck. I'm sending everybody to jail. Fuck you. Let's get some more fucking history done. Reading aloud, providing any historical insight I can. And I do say the Catholic Church has absolutely no authority to speak on this book or the interpretation of this text. Absolutely fucking zero. Go rape kids in Baltimore. Pope, Pope Francis. Oh, can you stand up and speak, brother? Ciao. Ciao, old man. Shut the fuck up. Teach history and die the fuck off. Get fucked. The burden of Babylon, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt thy voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise in the kingdoms of nations, gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. The destructive day of the Lord, how yea, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travieth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both the, with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven in the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened, and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the word for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause their arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. People will not change their behavior unless they allow a more mature individual into the group of people, which they won't do because they're fucking whores. Facts. People simply will not acknowledge my life exists in violation of so many laws that it's disgusting, and they just kill a bunch of fucking kids. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the medes against them, and which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruitful of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And so now clearly, we flip-flopped multiple times in this thing. But clearly it's an interpreter, right? Some, uh, if you had a standard atheist or something, they would say, see, God supports ravishing women and killing children. It's somebody writing about life experiences using an analogical structure. Heaven and hell to get analogies to the human condition of being happy or sad. Bliss, ignorance is bliss, happiness is bliss. Um, but this is just a, an individual person. Because v multiple, multiple times here in the Old Testament we've read, you know, don't, you shouldn't punish uh, sins. Everyone takes responsibility for their own actions. Don't punish the son for the sins of the father. And so this is just a different person interpreting, you know, how much punishment is, is um, reasonable or expected from common law to... Um, to, to a bad action. And again, the, the concept of God, the individual that was actually this smart, was so far predated to this, to the, this history that it's just, they would be, again, uh, alleged or aware of the wrath or the peace or the mercy, and then everyone just interprets it in their own way, and it's really just the individual scholars saying what they think about the world around them, not any given authority. And so, 
Absolutely not. You should not punish children for the sins of the father, but if they're over the age of 12 and they're committing sins, they should be punished as well. Absolutely. So again, everyone that's aware of my work, and how many fucking kids sit on YouTube all fucking day that are aware of my work? The chick from uh, Lex Friedman's podcast, the high schoolers, what are we supposed to do? Why can't you freak shows just fucking support my videos so we can stop killing kids and I can feel fucking safe? I know my intelligence scares you, it offends you, it's all of those things, but I am a human being that deserves to be treated with decency and fucking respect, and I've never been. Never, at any point in my life, have I ever slept consistently, ever. Growing up in my parents' house for 19 years, I never felt safe enough to sleep. And the whole community was the same fucking negligence and the same abuse. Literally been abused my entire life. The desolation of Babylon. In Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child days, excellency, shall be as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall, full, shall be full of doleful creatures. And owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. A rest from bondage. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them on their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou wast made to serve. The fall of Babylon's king, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, how hath the oppressed ceased, the golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. And he, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, and he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest, and it is, is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, their fir trees rejoice at thee. And the cedars of Lebanon say, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Help from beneath is moved for thee, to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under the tree, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Babylon to be cut off. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the, the man that made the earth to tremble, like that did shake kingdoms? that made the whole world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. So again, that's a complete hy hypocritical to not punishing children for their fathers sins multiple times in the Old Testament. That they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern in pools of water, and I will sweep it with the basin of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The fall of Assyria. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread up him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall d disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Palestina warned not to rejoice. 
in the, in the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. How, O gate, cry, O city, thou, whole Palestina, art dissolved. For there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? The, that the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. The burden of Moab, the burden of Moab, because in the night are of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence, because in the night Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. He has gone up to Bahith and to Debon, the high places, to weep. Moab shall howl over Nabo and over Medeba. All, on all their heads shall be baldness, and every beard cut off. In their streets they shall gird themselves with sackcloth on the tops of their houses, and in their streets every one shall howl, weepingly, weeping abundantly. And Heshbon shall cry, and Alayla, their voice shall be heard even unto ha Jahaz. Therefore the armed soldiers of Moab shall cry out, his life shall be grievous unto him, a crying from Moab. My heart shall cry out for Moab, as fugitives shall flee unto Zor, and Hefer of three years old, for by the morning, mounting up of Luhith, with weeping shall they go it up. For in the way of Horonaim they shall rise up a cry of destruction, for the waters of Nirim shall be desolate, for the hay is weathered away, the grass faileth, there is no green thing. Therefore the abundance they have gotten, and that which they have laid up, shall they carry away the brook of the willows. For the cry is gone round about the borders of Moab, the howling thereof unto Eglame, and the howling thereof unto Beer Elim. For the waters of Demon shall be full of blood, for I will bring upon more upon Demon lines upon him that escapeth of Moab, and upon the remnant of the land. David's throne. Send ye the lamb to the ruler of the land from Selah to the wilderness unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the, at the fords of Arnon. Ten counsel, execute judgment. Make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide the outcast, be ray, not him that wandereth. Let mine outcast dwell with thee, Moab. Be thou a, a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the extortioner is at end, an end. The spoiler ceases. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud, even in his haughtiness, and his pride and his wrath. But his lies shall not be so. Therefore shall Moab howl for Moab. Every one shall howl. For the foundations of Ker Haresheth shall yea mourn. Surely they are stricken. For the fields of Heshbon languish. Language, languish, sensuality languishes. And the vine of Sidma, the lords of the heathen, have broken down the principal plants thereof. They are come even unto Jazer. They wandered through the wilderness. Her branches are stretched out. They are gone over the sea. The glory of Moab will end. Therefore I will bewail with the weeping of Jezer, Jazer, the vine of Sidma. I will water thee with my tears, O Heshbon. And Elaele, for the shouting of thy for thy summer fruits and for thy harvest is fallen, and gladness is taken away and joy out of the plentiful field, and in the vineyards there shall be no singing, neither shall there be shouting. The treaders shall tread out no wine in their presses. I have made their vin vintage shouting to cease. Wherefore my bowels shall sound like an harp for Moab, and mine inward parts for Ker Haresh. And it shall come to pass, when it is seen that Moab is weary on the high place, that he shall come to his sanctuary to pray, but he shall not prevail. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning Moab since that time. But now the Lord has spoken, saying, Within three years, as the years of an, an hireling, and the glory of Moab shall be contemned with all the great multitude, and the remnant shall be very small and feeble. And see what it says, the Lord hath spoken? Doesn't, it, doesn't, that, doesn't that sound to you guys like a... Um, like a judge, like ruling, like 
in, in, in terms of a congregation, right? We have a trial, and then they, then they have the rule. Here's the Lord has spoken. We're in these congregations, and they're screaming and having these rituals out loud. They're just assigning it to the collective sentiment of, of, the, of the people in the room. Uh, the burdens of Damascus. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be ruinous, a ruinous heap. The cities of are over air are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Euphraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin. And the fatness in his flesh shall wax, shall wax lean. And it shall be as when the harvestman gathereth the corn, and reapeth the ears with his arm. And it shall be as the gathereth ears in the valley of Rephaim. Rephaim. A man shall look to his maker, yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it, as the shaking of an olive tree, two or three berries in the top of the uppermost bow, four or five in the out outmost fruitful branches thereof, saith the Lord God of Israel. At that day shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands. Neither shall respect that which his, his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. In that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bow in an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel. And there shall be desolation, because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and hast not been mindful of the rock of thy strength. Therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and shalt set, a, set it with strange slips. Sensorality slips, slip, blip. Life is a blip. In the day shalt thou make the, thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish. But the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief and of desperate sorrow. God will rebuke the nations. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of nations that make it rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush to the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chafe of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind, and behold, at eventide trouble. And before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. Ethiopia's destruction. Woe to the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea. So first reference to Ethiopia is probably having a um, having a, a navy of some sort. Even in vessels of bulrushes upon the water saying, Go, ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from the beginning here there high thereto, a nation meted out and trotted down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye. When he lifteth up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. For so the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest, and I will consider in my dwelling a place like a clear heat upon herbs, and like a cloud of dew in the heat of the harvest. For before the harvest, when the bud is perfect, and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with, the pruning, with pruning hooks, and take away and cut down the branches. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains, and to the beasts of the earth. And the fowls shall summer upon them, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. The present to the Lord. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts, of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning, high thereto. A nation met, met, meted, M-E-T-E-D, out and trodden underfoot, whose land the rivers have spoiled, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. The burden of Egypt. The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor's city, or his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fall in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have a familiar spirits, and to the wizards. Not sure who's writing this. And the Egyptians will I go over into the hand of the cruel Lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And the water shall fail from the sea, and the river shall be wasted and dried up. Because like when they say it's in reference to the time of the king of Ahaz of Syria. And I, why, I can't keep track of the lineages once the book of kings when you have a bunch of different turnovers. 
and they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up, and the reeds and flags shall wither. The paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. The fishers also shall mourn, and all they that cast angling the brooks shall lament. And they that spread nets upon the water shall languish. Moreover, they that work in the fine flax, and they that weave networks, shall be confounded. And they shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. The failure of the Egyptian wisdom. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools, and counsels, counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is because become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? Where are they? Where are they, wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what the Lord of hosts hath purposed upon Egypt. The princes of Zoan are become fools, and the princes of Noph are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush, may do. In that day Egypt shall be like unto woman, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over. So obviously I was right, this doesn't think too highly about women, <laughs> at least in terms of military structure. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself, because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. And that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. Egypt shall know the Lord. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and shall send them a Savior, and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians shall come to Egypt, and the Egyptians into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be a third with Egypt, and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. The shame of Egypt and Ethiopia. In the year that Tartan came unto the Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him, and fought against Ashdod, and took it. And the name Ashdod sounds familiar. No idea what, how, who's writing this, and what time later, why it's later on, I don't know. At the same time, the Lord by Isaiah, the son of Amaz, saying, Go, and loose the sackcloth from thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign, and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia, so shall the king of Syria lead away the Egyptian prisoners, and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered, to the shame of Egypt. Oh, let them cheeks fly. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia their expectation, and of Egypt their glory. And the inhabitant of this isle shall say in that day, Behold, such is our expectation, whither we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? The burden of the desert sea, the burden of the desert of the burden of the desert of the sea. As whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoil, spoil, spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media. All the sighing thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain, pangs that have taken hold upon me, as the pangs of a woman that travieth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. My heart panted, fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, said a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses, asses, and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. And he cried not, A lion, my lord, 
I stand continually with upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And, behold, here cometh a chariot of men, with a couple horsemen, and he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. O my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. The burdens of Duma and Arabia, the burdens of Duma, he calleth to me out of Seir, watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. The burden upon Arabia, in the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye traveling companies of Daedanim. The inhabitants of the land of Tama brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented with their bread him that fled. For they fled from the swords, from the drawn sword, and from the bent bow, and from their grievousness of war. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Within a year, according to the years of an hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fail. And the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, shall be diminished. For the Lord God of Israel hath spoken it. So this, to me, just sounds like hyping up for war, telling your own, your own teammates you're the best people ever. Or getting, you know, hype, boosting the morale, the sentiment of the people going to war. We're going to take everybody down. The burden of the valley of vision. The burden of the valley of vision. What aileth thee now that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops? Though thou that art full of stirs, a tumultuous city, a joyous city, thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All thy rulers are fled together. They are bound by the archers. All that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled from afar. Therefore said I, look away from me. I will weep bitterly, labor not to comfort me, because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble, and of treading down, and of the perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and crying to the mountains. And Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kerr uncovered the shield. And it shall come to pass that thy choicest valley shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall be set themselves in array at the gate not looking to the maker. And he discovered the covering of Judah, and thou didst look in that day to the armor of, armor of the house of the forest. Ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David, that there are many, and ye gathered together the waters of the lower pool. And ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. Sensorelli fortifies. Je suis fort. <laughs> I'm strong. Oh, fortify, yeah. Yea, made also a ditch between the two walls of the water of the old pool. But yea, have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither have respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. God calls for repentance. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping, and to mourning, and to baldness, and to girding with sackcloth. They really don't like the bald people. And what was it? It was uh, not Isaiah. Um, Elisha was the one that wanted to kill kids because they made fun of him being bald. Sick of lines on you. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Any, uh, any geographic insights to baldness, smell pattern baldness? I don't know. Throwing it out there. And it was revealed in mine ears by the, the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts. Go get thee unto this treasurer, even unto Shibna, which is over the house, and say, What hast thou here, and whom hast thou here, that thou hast hewed thee out a sepulchral here, as he that heweth him out a sepulchral on high, and that graveth in habitation for himself in a rock? Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity, and will surely cover thee. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station. From the, thy state shall he put thee down. Eliakim's rise to power. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will carry, call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. And I will clothe him with thy robe, and strengthen him with thy girdle. And I will com commit thy government into his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none sh shall shut. And he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, for he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. 
and they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened to the sure place be removed, and be cut down, and fall. And the burden that was upon it, it shall be cut off, for the Lord hath spoken it. The burden of Tyre, the burden of Tyre, how, ye ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no entering in, from the land of Chittim it is revealed to them. But be still, ye inhabitants of the isle, though whom the, the merchants of Zidon, 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 that pass over the sea, have replenished. And by great waters the seed of Sihor, the harvest of the river, is her revenue, and she is a mart of nations. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. As at the report concerning Egypt, so shall they be sorely pained at the report of Tyre. Pass ye over Tarshish, how ye inhabitants of the isle. Is this your joyous city, whose antiquity is of ancient days? Her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. Who hath taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honor honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts hath purposed it, to stain the pride of all glory, and to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Pass through thy land as a river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord hath given a commandment against the merchant city to destroy the strongholds thereof. And he said, Thou shalt no more rejoice, O thou oppressed virgin, daughter of Zidon. Arise, pass over to Chittim. There also shalt thou have no rest. So then why are we moving if we're going to not have rest there either? The land of the Chaldeans. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans, this people was not, till the Assyrian founded it for them that dwell in the wilderness. They set up the towers thereof, they raised up the palaces thereof, and he brought it to ruin. How ye sh howl, ye ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Take an harp, go about the city, thou harlot that hast been forgotten. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass after the end of seventy years that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she, she shall turn to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treated nor laid up, for the merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord, to eat sufficiently and for a durable clothing. The empty earth, behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the word languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the, the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The new wine mourneth, and the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of Tabret ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoiceth endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up, that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. And the, and the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. My guess is if they're crying in the streets for wine, I don't think they're following a five drinks a week from the FDA. Glorify the Lord, when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore, glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth 
have we heard songs, even glory to the righteousness. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. My treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who hath fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in a snare. For the windows up from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. Not much insight to any of this. The Lord shall reign. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall, and rise, not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners, and gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. Praise for the Lord's faithfulness. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made a city in heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the people, strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat when the blast of the, of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers, as the heat in a, in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. Death is swallowed in victory. And in the mountain shall, I guess death swallows. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make up unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, a fat things full of morrow, of wines and the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will shout, sh swallow up death and victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. And we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, and even as straw is trodden down from the dung, for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground even to the dust. A mind stayed on God. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, that our righteous nation, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he is trusteth in thee. Trust ye the Lord forever, for in the, in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. I think it's like the second reference or third reference to again direct. Lord Jehovah, I'm not sure the etymology of the word Jehovah. Obviously we have Jehovah Witnesses, not sure what they witnessed. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city, he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground, he bringeth it, it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor, and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou, most upright, dost weigh the path of the just. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee? The desire of our soul is to thy name, and to the remembrance of thee. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee, thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Let favor be shewed to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly, and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, thy, they will not see. But they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemy shall devour them. A peace for God's people. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. 
but by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Since reality mentions, if you don't mention someone's name, they will literally get tortured. 22 years of continuous ongoing fucking torture. They are dead, they shall not live. They are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them, and made all their memory to perish. Thou hast increased the nation, O Lord. Thou hast increased the nation. Though thou art glorified, thou hast hadst removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Lord, in, the, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when they, thy, cha, thy chastening was upon them. Like as a woman with child that draweth near to the time of her delivery, sensuality delivers, is in pain and crieth out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have as it were brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, yea, that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and this earth shall cast out the dead. The Lord punishes iniquity. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain, the vineyard of red wine. In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Anger is fury. Fury is fierce. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? I would go through them. I would burn them together. Or let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud, and fill the face of the world with fruit. Hath he smitten him, as he smote those that smote him? Or is he slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him? In measure, when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. He stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. And this is all the fruit to take away his sin. When he maketh all the stones of the altar of ch as chalk stones, that are beaten in sunder, the groves and images shall not stand up. The desolation of cities. Yet the defense city shall be desolate, and the habitation forsaken, and left like a wilderness. There shall be calf, the calf feed, and there shall be he lie down, and consume the branches thereof. When, when the bows thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will shew them no favor. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall beat off, I beat off, the Lord beats off, I beat off, from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem. Woe to Euphraim, woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Euphraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are over, overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which is as tempest of hail, and a destroying storm, as the flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the, wind, with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet, and the glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fat valley, shall be a fading flower, and as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up, a crown of glory. And that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory, and for a diadem of beauty, unto the residue of his people, and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for strength to, to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have erred through wine, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink, they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full, are full of vomit and filth, filthiness, so that there is no place clean. That doesn't sound appetizing. 
Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts, for the precept must be upon the pre must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line by line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the re the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken, a precious cornerstone. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, yea, scornful men, that rule his people which is in Jerusalem, because yea, have said, he, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies of our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious, precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not, shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and the righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place, a covenant with death. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it go, goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. For the Lord shall rise up in his Mount Perizim, as rise up as in Mount Perizim, and shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon. And he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your brands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. Hearken to my voice. Give ye ear and hear my voice. Hearken and hear my speech. Doth the plowman plow all day to sow? Doth he open and break the clods of his ground? When he hath made plain the face thereof, doth he not cast abroad the fitches, and scatter the cumin, and cast in the principal wheat, and the appointed barley, and the rye in their place? For his God doth instruct him to desecration, and doth teach him. For the fitches are not threshed with a threshing instrument, neither is a cart wheel turned, about upon the cumin. But the fitches are beaten out with a staff, and the cumin with a rod. Bread corn is bruised, because he will not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheel of his cart, nor bruise it with his horsemen. This also cometh forth from the Lord of his host, which is wonderful in counsel, and excellent in working. Let's call, let's call it there. Did four page turns on 560. So not much, not much historical insight. We'll be that is that was Isaiah twenty eight twenty nine. Next time we'll be picking up at Woe to Jerusalem, twenty nine one. And so not much insight. Not sure who's writing this. Not sure what the compilation. We did have a line where the Lord was beating off, so that was insightful. <laughs> but past that, it's just way too general. Just seems to be talking about like why Israel's great, <laughs> sweet, cool. And then just a bunch of analogies, parables, and allegories. So not much insight. Hopefully we get back to some more structured history at some point. But certainly when we turn over to the New Testament. But just keep reading aloud and seeing if I can bring anything. If not, here's an audio book. So again, my constitutional rights are profoundly and extensively violated. I have been denigrated, disrespected, abused, neglected, tortured my entire life. People cannot respect me. I'm begging somebody to treat with enough decency and respect to give me a time frame on publication, to actually publish my shit and give me my money, or just let me manage my own money so I can get away from my toxic fucking parents. Please. Fucking please. Thank you.